Good morning, everyone. Actually, I actually have no idea what time you're watching. Good time of day, everyone. Cuba is a very interesting place, and now is the time to go because things are changing fast. We went for five days, four nights, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how much everything costs so you can better budget out your trip and use this as a reference. Havana felt like a totally different universe, although you can swim there from Florida, just like this 64-year-old lady did by swimming 53 hours straight. You know, there was once a time when I thought I was tough, so we went with the mindset of keeping costs to a minimum, but we also wanted to experience everything and not be limited too much by cost. So we still went out every day and night and had an awesome time. Airfare and visa. I flew Alaskan Airlines direct from Los Angeles to Havana. Airfare includes several fees because it includes Cuban medical insurance and other fees. There were some cheaper flights at the time, but we booked this whole trip pretty last minute. So when we landed, we took a taxi from the airport to our Airbnb in Central, which seemed like a very local part of town. I didn't see a single tourist on our street the whole time we were there. So we booked our Airbnb two days before we left. So kind of poor planning on our end. We still found this two bedroom place that we split three ways. It was comfortable, I didn't mind it, but I was not a fan of the lighting. I just realized that's a very snobby first world complaint. There was a lot of this older fluorescent lighting which made everything kind of feel like a horror film. What's up guys? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> After we landed, we just walked around a little bit, checked out the Malecon. There was a lot of people on the street trying to give us recommendations on places to eat, which you should never listen to because they will try to squeeze those tourist dollars just straight out of you. We just randomly ended up here. Food and drinks were great. Afterwards, we walked around and ended up getting some more late night snacks and drinks. So day two, the internet deprivation kicked in and we ended up at this hotel for internet. Next was the beach. Havana itself doesn't have a great beach, so you kind of have to go a little ways out. We were thinking about going to Varadero. We've heard a lot of really good things about it. But after speaking to some locals, we ended up going to Santa Maria del Mar. It's much closer and I was told it has a little bit more of a local vibe. So we took a taxi there, got some drinks and enjoyed the blue Caribbean beach. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Is it Caribbean? I guess so. I thought it was Caribbean. How to pronounce. First thing that pops up is how to pronounce caramel. That's caramel car or caramel? I think it's caramel. If you say caramel, I, I'm gonna- Caramel apple. Does caramel not apple. sound right. Got a little sidetrack. Caribbean beach was amazing. We got some really good street food, some, ah, some souvenirs, and taxi back to Old Havana. That's another thing. Havana, Havana. It's like, I guess the locals call it Havana. I'm the worst at pronunciation, so never use me as a reference. Old Havana was super cool. Lots to see when you're walking around. It's a little bit on the touristy side, but lots of history, trendy restaurants. Just walk around that area and you'll find something cool. The food was pretty amazing there as well. Later that night, we ended up walking to a bar called Submarino Amarillo. That might've been one of my favorite bars there. It's a Beatles themed venue. The crowd was mostly younger locals. It was interesting to watch Cubans perform American cover songs. They were actually pretty good. <laughs> dude, this dude just tried to steal my phone. Seemed like a pretty nice guy and stuff, but he's just like right there somewhere. Let's see if we can find him. But yeah, he just came up and just like put his arm around me. I was just like, where are you guys from? And then I just feel my phone just like start slipping out of my back pocket here. He's just like right back there too. God, I don't know, I wanna do something about it, but it's, I don't know. We're not from this. At first I thought he was just trying to sell us something. He, I just thought it was gonna fall out, so I was trying to catch it, but then when I caught it, it was in his hands. Like he was trying to pull it away from me. So I had to yank it back. It was super strange. I didn't really know what to do at that moment. He was just like, hey man, so how's your stay? Like after I caught him trying to steal my phone and he's like trying to shake my hand and stuff. And I was like, this is weird. You're like the nicest burglar I've ever met. Day three, I saw one of Romina's videos uh, where she goes to Soroa and I was like, I must go there. She's got a bunch of videos on Cuba. So you should definitely check out her channel. She has lots of good recommendations and things to check out. But before heading out, we found out that that whole area was completely dried out. So super lame we ended up not going and instead we had another issue to deal with i was trying to sleep in and then they're just like still can't find his passport no i think you're gonna be stuck here forever let's just take a lap and just like look behind everything under everything we weren't sure exactly what happens if you're traveling and lose a passport, but we went to the US Embassy and they actually made a whole new one in like two to three hours for $135. Not too bad, it could have been worse. After that, we just wandered around Central and Vedado. We ate, ate, and ate some more. Eating out in Los Angeles is expensive, so we took advantage there. I really wish we had a little bit more time for one of those convertible taxis. Again, another recommendation from Romina's video, but we were kind of hoping to do it when it was sunny and the weather was kind of murky, so we ended up not doing it. Every time we flagged down a taxi, I was secretly hoping Vin Diesel might be our driver and we'd somehow be involved in a car chase. 
that ended up not happening, unfortunately. But you know, sometimes you just have to be content with what you have. I asked a dozen people, what's the one thing you must do in Cuba? And they said, you have to go to the Malecon and bring some rum. Thank you guys for recommending it. Malecon is like this long strip along the coast where a lot of the locals just kind of congregate every night and you could just kind of hang out there and everyone is super friendly. So you'll probably end up talking to somebody. The rum there is so good and inexpensive. When you guys go, bring me back a bottle, seriously. Usually if I'm drinking liquor, I will have to mix, but this rum, I was just able to just drink straight out of the bottle. Like late at night, it looked like there was a lot of drunk people just wandering around this area. So there's probably some stuff going around there. Maybe you could go check it out. Let me know what's there. Dylan a writer, so he would not let us leave without going to Hemingway's house. We took a taxi there. We walked around and there were some interesting things to look at. If I were to go again, I would probably book a tour guide because they can tell you a lot of the interesting little details of the house. For example, there was a point when Hemingway was obsessed with his weight, so he would weigh himself every day and then write his weight on the wall. There's no signs in the area where you can read about what you're looking at, so maybe tour guides can tell you stuff like that. Then we walked around and we were basically just looking for the place that looks the most local. Like if we walk into a place and we just completely stick out and everyone's like, what? There's tours here, why? That's the place I wanna to go to. We ended up here and it was great and cheap. And we took a taxi to Fusterland. It's totally free to go in and check out this house, but there's a donation box if you want. Walked around that area, saw some kite surfers. Now I wanna learn how to kite surf, that looks awesome. Then we went to FAC, which was this super cool art bar gallery. They're open Thursday through Sunday. Really cool to just walk around, enjoy all this art and music, it was great. They don't mess around with their drinks. You might get plastered. I didn't see a ton of locals there. They're mostly tours from other countries, uh, but it was still awesome. We met people from Germany, from Singapore, Singapore and it was a really good night. Yeah, and I drank too much. Day five, we ended up meeting with our new friend for breakfast. So we were walking down the middle of the street and that's when I realized I need to throw up right now. So I found an alley that looked semi-quiet. I ran over to this corner and I looked around and I was like, okay, this is the spot. <laughs> then I look up like slightly and there's this like kid in this balcony. I think he was like six years old, staring at me this whole time. I'm really curious to what that boy was thinking. I wonder if he was kind of traumatized, like what is going on? Or if he was just kind of like, Psh, another guy that can't handle. God, control yourself. Afterwards, we saw this huge line on the street for ice cream, so this must be the ice cream spot. We waited in this long line and had some ice cream. Then we realized we fucked up. On our way back, we realized that we kind of went to this like corner that no one really goes to, but everyone else was waiting in the line for this. It's like we went all the way to Disneyland to eat at their cafeteria and then left. We picked up a couple cigars as souvenirs on the way back. I don't know anything about cigars, so I just kind of picked up whatever. And back to the airport. So now let's tally everything up. I spent 548 US US dollars for flight, visa, Airbnb, and 226 CUCs during my stay there. And that converts to about 240 US dollars. So my entire trip with conversion rate and everything included was 788 US dollars. Things are gonna change depending on how many people you go with and where you decide to go. For example, all our taxi rides were split three ways. You can probably see that a majority of the cost was the flight and visa to get there and back. So if you're doing an extended trip, you could expect to not spend a ton more than this. I had to get back in time for work, but I would have loved to stay at a couple extra days and head down to Trinidad. Looks like there's a lot of cool stuff to do down there and there's this cave bar that looks epic. That's how much I spent. You were doing pretty good on your budgeting. Passport destroyed you. Good job, Dylan, except for the passport. Miko was the best at staying on budget and she only spent $129 while she was there. Basically just didn't waste money on anything she didn't really need to. If you're on a tight budget, there's probably places where you can trim down on costs. And on the other hand, if you like to travel luxuriously, there were some hotels that were like over $300 a night. If it's your first time going there and you're still confused about a few things, uh, check out my other video where I talk about visa, things to know, currency, all that stuff. So if you've been to Cuba and have any tips for future travelers, post it in the comments below. I'll be pinning the most useful comments so everyone else can see. I'm also planning out some future trips and I wanna know what is your favorite travel destination and why. Have fun and seriously, don't forget to bring me back some rum. I'll take a dark Havana club. Thanks, bye.